Hi, good morning, everyone. I think we'll kick off. Um, so first of all, you'll notice that I'm coming up as Steve Kent. Um, I'm obviously not Steve Kent. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself. My name's Carla Naden, and I'm the marketing manager here at Perdicom. Um, so I'd like to just wel welcome you all and thank you all for attending today. Um, and just wanted to talk very briefly um, about some of the support that we can offer you. Um, just specifically from the marketing department. Um, you'll know that um, there's a whole host of value-added services and professional services that we can offer you. Uh, we've done a lot of content as well recently around um, some of the technical support. Um, you'll all be familiar with Alex Claro. But one of the things I don't think we talk about enough is how we can support you um, your business and your business growth from a marketing perspective. Um, so that's why I'm here today. Um, we've got um, loads of different things we can offer you. So whether that's support with marketing um, MDF, which is your marketing development funds, um, get in touch with us. We can help you with putting together your plans um, and helping with uh, the various sort of administrative um, aspects of that process. Um, very recently, we've helped some of our partners with design. Um, so whether you need things like sales flyers, different bits and pieces like that, uh, we're able to help. Um, we can do case studies for you. Uh, there's a section on the website where you can um, submit your um, case study application. Um, and also it's probably worth saying as well, especially at the moment where maybe capacity and resource uh, might be under pressure. Um, if there's stuff that you don't see on the website that we're offering, do still get in touch. Uh, primarily we're here to help you and to support you. Um, so I'll make sure that we follow up um, this event and provide all our contact details so you can get in touch with us directly. Um, we've also now as well, which is really exciting, got a full-time marketing person dedicated um, specifically to um, the Comscope Ruckus offering. Um, so we've got resource, use it, get in touch, um, let us help you. Um, oh yeah, and one other thing which is really exciting is we've got a marketing portal um, which is due for release. This is like something we've been really excited about. We're hoping that it will be going live um, sometime around the next six to eight weeks. And this will be on the Perdicom website. Um, and this is for you guys, you can log in um, and it's gonna give you the ability to choose all kinds of different sales and marketing assets um, and co-brand those assets, download it on the fly. Um, and hopefully then, yeah, that's um, just um, another element of support that we can offer you. So do look out for that. Uh, we will be making some noise obviously once it's all ready. Um, so yeah, a little bit about the format for today. Um, we've got a really fantastic um, presentation for you today. Um, and that's going to be presented by Hasina. She's a fantastic presenter, so you're in good hands. Um, there's an opportunity for Q&A throughout, um, but I think what we'll probably do is if you use the, um, either the chat panel um, or the Q&A, we'll come back at the end and then go back through kind of all the questions so that we make sure we're covering everything. Um, yeah, so I think we'll kick off. I'll hand you over to Hasina and I'll let her um, introduce herself. Thanks very much. Perfect, thank you, Carla. So good morning, everybody. My name's Hasina Danji and I work in the sales acceleration team at Ruckus. So within Sales Acceleration, we're responsible for delivering programs for what we've defined as the growth engines for the business to drive revenue. And a key growth engine for us in 2020 is boosting our switching business. So what we're going to take you through today is the enablement series, the enablement presentation, which is designed by sellers for sellers to take you through this end to end um, switching story through the lens of a, of a customer sales cycle. Um, I want to first off thank you all for your loyalty to Ruckus um, and thank you for your business. Um, I think we all recognize that we're all in very challenging circumstances at the moment. 
Um, but I want to thank you for taking the time to come to the presentation today. And I hope that the content we deliver to you today will help you drive your business forward through the rest of, of 2020. So with that, let, let's start with what the goals are of this presentation. So I want to start off by talking about what this is about and also what it's not about. So this is a different kind of sales presentation we're going to deliver to you today. It's not a pitch. We're not here to ram the um, features and benefits of our ICX line um, uh, in, down your throats. What we're here to do is rather give you an end-to-end -end sales process. So um, what we recognize is that customers don't buy based on the product alone. It's really down to the sales experience. So we want to arm you with that framework you need to deliver that superior sales experience to your end customers. We want to give you the tools, the content, the talking points you need to win a switching cycle all the way from the start, identifying the opportunity all the way through to the close um, and finishing the deal. And we've drawn together multiple sources for this enablement deck. As I said, it was designed by sellers for sellers, but we've drawn in sources, including um, war stories from around the field. Um, we've got customer references in here. We've got detail from product as well to give you that end to end story to help you articulate that through the lens of a customer, through the lens of a typical sales cycle. Um, I want to recognize that we have quite a broad audience on the call today. So many of you perhaps already sell switching, whether it's um, rucker switching or another vendors. So there's probably a, a, a different parity of, diff of audiences on the call today versus people who don't sell switching alone. So we've tried to keep the messaging really high level so that everyone can take something, um, something away from the call today. So with that in mind, <clears throat> let's dive into the perspective of the customer. So from our perspective, um, many of our customers already have our Ruckus wireless technology. It's what we're known for in the marketplace. However, they often have another company switches. And when it comes to making, the, making those decisions around investing in the network, the challenges that these customers have perfectly align to our value proposition. So there was a study performed by IHS Market, which looked into the investment priorities around networking from an end user perspective. And these are some of the top challenges. So we go from the bottom up around replacing old equipment, lowering the cost of the network, supporting this boom in terms of traffic growth on the network, um, and also the proliferation of new types of devices that are, that are also running on this. So the good news is that our value proposition perfectly aligns to these um, investment priorities when it comes to networking. Um, and we have a solution that's ready fit for purpose um, and it, it, the advantages it gives you as a, as a solution provider, as a channel partner, is that you're able to sell more complete solutions, giving you a competitive edge in the, in the marketplace. So we're going to run through today's presentation using this as our map. So let's set this as a map in our head and we're going to take you through each stage of the sales cycle and specific content for each one. So everything that you need in order to deliver that superior sales experience all the way through from what are the questions we need to ask when we're in front of a customer to indicate if they're ready to make that investment in their switching network. How do we set a buying criteria to the customer to identify and articulate the outcomes they're looking to achieve with their investment and then deliver a value proposition that's perfectly aligned to that um, and challenges the, the status quo? How do we handle the common objections we hear in the field after we've delivered the pitch, after we've delivered the value proposition and reassure that customer? And then finally, how do, create, how do we create that sense of urgency with the customer to close the deal, get that order in and assure the customer of any remaining concerns? So let's use this as a map as we run through the rest of the presentation um, as we dive into each stage of, of the sales cycle when it comes to a switching opportunity. So starting off with how to identify the opportunity right at the beginning of the sales cycle. So the perspective of the customer is maybe thinking, um, why am I here, right? So either they are perhaps unaware of the situation, they don't understand the impact of not doing anything, or they don't understand the benefits of making this investment. So when we're at this stage with the customer, what are the questions we can ask them to indicate if they're ready to make that investment in, in their switching infrastructure? So based on us corralling insight from, from across the field, we understand there's four main criteria that, that we should, or four main criteria, four main questions we should ask when we're in a wireless opportunity to see if there's, a, if there's an opportunity for switching. And the first criteria um, aligns to that top priority in terms of the IHS study, which is all around replacing old equipment. So does your customer have a, an aging switching infrastructure that's at least five years old? So this is probably one of the most common criteria, what with switching being replaced much less frequently on a, on a much 
longer cycle compared to the wireless infrastructure. And this challenge in terms of aging is, is becoming more and more prevalent as we're seeing those networks that were built five years ago were built for, frankly, a, an entirely different world when it comes to data to, to the world we're in today. So many of those networks are starting to encounter problems in terms of overall performance, the ability to deliver um, on the uh, data demands for applications and services that businesses are trying to adopt now. Um, there was one example actually we saw within the education field. So five years was our, was our uh, cutoff point, but um, we saw an example recently with an education customer who had a switching infrastructure that was 13 years old. Um, in their um, uh, in, in their in their um, estate, so they're encountering huge problems when it came to um, when it came to performance and, and capacity across their network. The second criteria that we see is around Wi-Fi 6. So a new wireless standard has launched in the marketplace, so Wi-Fi 6 11AX. This new wireless standard is, is designed to provide that higher grade um, enhanced experience in high density environments, whoever the user is, you know, be it a student, be it a guest, um, be it a customer. So whilst we're not seeing an immediate adoption um, across every industry for Wi-Fi 6, we are seeing specific deployments requesting Wi-Fi 6, and, and this is growing. So the the challenge here is that the bottleneck is no longer the access point to fully exploit the potential of wi-fi 6 a multi gigabit uh, inf uh, switching infrastructure is needed in order to really um, unleash the full capacity of wi-fi 6. so if your customer is deploy planning a deployment um, or a wi wireless refresh um, it's in their best interest to update their um, or future proof their switching infrastructure to allow them to fully unleash um, the full power of wi-fi 6. The third criteria is focused around cost um, and, um, and uh, IT resource. And, and I can imagine this is um, going to become an increasing priority for many as we progress through the rest of this year. So does your customer have a separate wired and wireless management platform? And are they struggling when it comes to configuration and troubleshooting? So we know that the biggest costs when it comes to networking center around configuration, um, that speed of deployment, getting up and running, those moves, ads, and changes, and then secondly, troubleshooting across the network. So identifying that root cause of the problem and, um, and applying diagnostics to, to resolve that. These older networks you know, that, are, that are five years or, or older won't allow that, fast, um, that facility to those IT teams to resolve these problems quickly. So this is an opportunity for us because the customer has a network that has huge overhead costs, perhaps due to two separate management, um, management platforms, and they're struggling to effectively manage their, their network with a lack of visibility from an end-to-end -end perspective. And then the last criteria is all around mission critical applications and services. So uh, none of these criteria is absolutely distinct. So this also lends to the first point around an aging infrastructure. So five years ago, we we're in a, a different data world. As, as we said, there was a study done by Ericsson that, um, that said uh, about 65% of devices on the network were, were people connected, right? So there were devices, there were tablets, there were computers. Um, and only a third were, were the things in terms of the um, IoT devices that were connected to the network. Over the next few years, this relationship will completely flip on its head and, and the majority of, um, of uh, devices connected to the network will be things and um, not people controlled. So if your customer is looking to rapidly rapidly deploy these, these applications, these services, these devices, they're gonna need a solution that uniformly manages those policies um, and enables that automated deployment and rollout of, of the infrastructure. So these four main criteria are what we see as common in terms of defining that switching opportunity, the age of the network causing problems with performance, uh, deploying a wireless refresh, Wi-Fi 6 that needs multi-gig to fully exploit the, the full potential, um, a distinct wired and wireless management platform that's resulting in a lack of visibility and huge overhead costs and or a customer who's looking to, to deploy these data rich mission critical applications and services across their business. If your customer answers yes to any of these questions, it's likely that you have an opportunity for switching. The next stage in the in the buyer cycle, once we've identified that there's a potential requirement um, is, is the, the customer starts to think about how are they going to go about addressing this challenge? So I know I've got a problem. I know I need to make an investment. How am I going to go about putting together a solution that's going to be fit for purpose? So we've engaged with the customer. We know that they have a requirement. And now we want to start to lead them down a path at the end of which we hope is a, is a ruckus investment. 
Um, now, many of you on the call are probably experts at this and you do this almost instinctively without calling it out as a, as a separate stage. But this is really critical in terms of offer, offering a differentiated experience. We're not jumping from identifying the requirement straight into delivering the pitch. Rather, we're taking the time with the customer to identify what are the outcomes they want to achieve with their purchase before we start talking about products, before we start talking about brands, before we start talking about um, specifications and, um, and, um, and very specific requirements. So what are the outcomes, the drivers behind this investment that the customer is looking for? The benefit in doing this in the, is that it allows us to identify what these are so that we can deliver a value proposition that is perfectly aligned to that buying criteria and allows you to preempt the competition. So I'm going to take you through some examples of how we go about what are some of the common buyers criteria and switching opportunities and how do we go about setting a buyers criteria with two examples from, from the field. So as we're talking to these customers, three common criteria that we see, um, uh, one, of the, one of the most common is around management. So um, the solution that you need is a seamless management layer for both your switching and your wireless to address your problems. This will allow you to have full visibility into your network, meaning you can troubleshoot faster, you can configure faster and um, more cost effectively across, across your network. So this is where we're setting that criteria with the customer that management is a, is a key outcome they need uh, when it comes to assessing the solution. The second, uh, the second criteria that we see commonly, and, and again, will likely become more and more prevalent as we progress through the rest, the rest of the year, is the ability to have a scalable um, network. So rather than investing in this um, uh, chassis-based system, um, investing in a modular, uh, modular system will allow you to pay as you grow and address these issues of concern around OPEX. So this form factor network will both simplify the setup and the configuration of your network, um, but also from an ongoing perspective, it's gonna minimize troubleshooting and critically, it's gonna make those upgrades easier. So as your business grows, you can make that investment to expand your network whilst protecting the investment that you've already made. There's no costly rip and replace. And then the last criteria that we see quite commonly is all around um, uh, the multi gigabit needs um, today to, to deliver that next generation wireless network. So having that multi gigabit switching network will enable your next generation wireless deployment to deliver the performance that you need in order to roll out those services and applications. It allows you to unleash the capability um, and the performance you're looking to deliver at the, at the edge. So these are three common criteria. And you'll notice that I very deliberately didn't mention the brand ruckus. I very deliberately didn't mention any products. It was all around the outcome that the customer is looking to achieve with their, with their investment. Let's dive into a couple of examples that we have um, from different customers. And I've gathered these stories from around the field. Um, we've anonymized these, but, but maybe if you've been to some of our events, you might be able to guess who, who the customers are. So the first um, example I want to take you through is a, a large multinational pharmaceutical company. Um, the sales representative who worked on this deal was Nick Kimber, who many of you probably know already. Um, it was based in Northern Europe. The enterprise has over 50,000 employees and over 200 sites. So the situation that they were in, the, the reason, the requirement that they had is that they had a competitor's uh, leading um, uh, networking vendor's infrastructure in place. So they'd invested with this, uh, with this vendor. Um, and despite the fact that they continued to make investment and, uh, investments and purchase more and more of, of this equipment, the network was, be was becoming extremely unwieldy to manage. They were really, really struggling in terms of the management and, and rollout, further rollout of the network. And critically, the costs were spiraling. So despite the fact that it's with the same vendor, these costs were, were getting greater and greater and greater rather than, rather than shrinking and becoming more cost effective. In addition to the challenges they had around management and cost, um, they, also had, um, they were also looking to roll out Skype for Business across their business units. And they wanted to use this voice video IM uh, capability within Skype to communicate across the business. And they were encountering huge performance issues that, frankly, the, the network they had in place was just not able to deliver the performance they needed um, for, that, for that application. Um, and similarly, when they were encountering problems because they didn't have uh, the visibility they needed into the network, they were struggling to troubleshoot um, and get insight into the network. So all, all of these challenges combined. So the criteria that the seller set, um, that Nick Kimber set with this customer was all centered around that simplified management. 
you need a simplified network architecture and management plane um, to allow you to reduce the complexities that you're facing today, despite you know, purchasing everything from the same vendor. You need a unified and proactive management platform um, that's going to deliver you a lower OPEX cost. So that you don't have these spiraling, unpredictable um, management costs to, to, to run your network. Um, and you need that data visualization to provide you with the insight across the network. So the seller here really managed to build credibility with the customer because he took the time to not simply respond to a, a vanilla list of requirements, but to go back and really truly understand what are the key pain points that the customer is encountering, what are their future object, um, uh, what are their future goals, and and what's really necessary based on how the company is structured and how their IT organization is structured. Um, what are the outcomes they need to achieve in order to make this a, a worthwhile investment? So centering around that low touch management for the for the customer. No mention of ruckus, no mention of Comscope, no mention of, of any specific product. Another example we have is within the education field. So um, this customer is based in the Middle East and, and Africa region. Um, they're an existing wireless customer, so they already had over a thousand of our, of our APs, um, but it was running on another vendor's switching. Um, this university was investing um, heavily in expanding the university. They were adding departments, they were adding uh, faculties, they were adding dormitories. Um, the, the, the site was growing at quite a rapid rate. However, the switching infrastructure was really letting them down um, in terms of delivering the performance they needed. So they had an aging switching infrastructure. It was at least five years old. I believe it's around seven years old, but it was definitely over five years old very very large campus which was run by a very lean um, and limited IT team and they were overwhelmed in terms of the time they were spending managing both the wired and wireless network separately um, and ongoing problems in terms of downtime across the network they, they weren't finding the root cause of the problem quick enough um, or resolving it fast enough to the to the satisfaction of their of their customers of their students um, and of the of the teachers as you can imagine the, the downtime across the network is extremely disruptive in, a, in an education environment so here the the criteria that the seller set with the customer was that you need a high performance scalable net, network that's going to give you that exceptional throughput that you need to deliver that uh, education experience that the university promises plus that you need investment protection so the investment that you make today has to meet the needs of tomorrow and you have to have a scalable structure that means that you could pay as the university grows um, rather than any costly rip and replaces in addition you need a consolidated wired and wireless management to simplify both the network deployment as your university grows um, so that you don't hit these barriers that you're encountering today um, and also simplify the troubleshooting, giving you that end-to-end -end visibility so that you can get to the root cause of the problem faster, resolve this and minimize any unplanned downtime across the network. Again, the this, this seller has gone back to the customer. These are the outcomes that the, that the customer is looking to get from their investment. No mention of the brand, no mention of ruckus, no mention of any products. These are just focused on, on the outcomes that the customer is looking to achieve. So then at the next stage of the buyer's journey that you've identified the opportunity, you've set a buyer's criteria, be that around uh, management, be that around scalability, be that around performance, or quite commonly a, a combination of all three. There's, there's never a, a, very distinct, um, a very distinct requirement from a customer. It's all, all, uh, almost always a combination of, of all three. So, so now, now that you've set the criteria with the customer, the customer's thinking, why am I gonna buy from you? What is it that you're able to deliver uh, to me um, that's, um, that's uh, unique to, to, um, to your company, to your product? Um, so as we know, we've, we've said this at the beginning of the presentation, it's not, it's not on product differentiation alone, it's the superior sales experience that's gonna make the difference here. So delivering a value proposition that is perfectly aligned to those criteria we've set with the customers is gonna be the clincher here. We've gathered together a value proposition that we believe is quite compelling and offers customers very unique benefits when they pair a ruckus AP to a ruckus switch. So when customers pair a ruckus switch to a ruckus AP, they're able to enjoy three major benefits. And on top of that, the solution is typically 20% cheaper to acquire from a, uh, from a CapEx perspective. 
um, and on average about 42% cheaper to operate over, over the next five years than that of our, of our nearest competitors, which is quite a compelling argument with many organizations having extremely tight budgets uh, for the rest of this year. The value proposition, as I mentioned, centers on these three main benefits. So the first piece is around converge management. So for those customers who, with, for whom management is a, is a key criteria, they're able to spend less time and less money on managing their network elements because they have a single interface to see the entire, um, to see the entire network. Um, in addition, we automate the provisioning of these APs and switches, meaning that there's a common zero touch approach um, and these organizations can get up and running um, and achieve that speed of deployment much, much faster. The second uh, pillar of our value proposition is all around the scalability element, allowing customers to pay as they grow, meaning that they can conserve CapEx and OPEX dollars as they grow the network by deploying these upgradable fixed switches. So instead of investing in these chassis level um, chassis based systems we deliver that capability without the associated cost and disruption with those forklift upgrades um, so each investment that the customer makes will be smaller um, to upgrade the the performance needed than a chassis based rip and replace and this is applicable both at the edge and the core of, of the network the final piece of the value proposition centers around price for performance so we're able to deliver the power and the performance that these applications, these data rich applications require at a cost that these enterprises demand. So with this lower total cost of ownership with Ruckus, which is a combination of both the superior performance of the access points and of course the scalable um, switching infrastructure, typically customers see 20 to 40% lower cost both to deploy and manage their enterprise grade network, which is an extremely strong proposition. You're able to get that enterprise grade performance um, at an extremely palatable cost. So we're going to dive into each one of these elements into more detail so that we can help you position how uh, converged management, scalability and, and price for performance. What are some of the points um, or the uh, specific uh, or the features that we have that mean that we're able to deliver these promises? So when it comes to converged management, the, the insight in terms of how to position this um, is all around the ability to troubleshoot um, uh, and, uh, and configure your network faster because there's a common dashboard for both the wired and the wireless elements. So this means that the IT teams are able to react quicker to those unex uh, unexpected events that occur across the network. They can solve those not network problems faster and, and minimize that downtime um, across the network. So it simplifies the, the process for those IT organizations um, and it means that they can, they can boost their speed of troubleshooting and, and deliver that SLA to the business. The second piece or the second benefit within converge management is about all in one management. So there's no need for any extra hardware or software. So the management within the smart zone platform includes things like guest access, reporting, analytics. It's not a base unit that you have to add additional features to. You're investing in everything that you're going to need. I mean, of course, you have the option to, to add in any extra things like the IoT troubleshooting, but for those basic pieces around moves, adds, and changes, and troubleshooting, you have everything that you need within the smart zone platform that allows you that, that capability to manage your end-to-end your -end wireless and wired network. Um, and the last piece, this is we're seeing this as much, much more of a differentiator um, uh, uh, the multi-tenancy capability. So um, for those uh, partners that are looking to, um, partners or customers, frankly, that are looking to set up um, uh, the ability to subdivide their network, either from a channel perspective, because they're looking to bridge into managed services and set up multiple environments they can manage and configure networks on behalf of their customers, or for very complex end customers that are looking for um, different uh, departments or different environments within their network. The smart zone platform enables easy creation of multiple zones um, and tiered tenants, and it's all managed again from that same common dashboard so that the platform can accommodate any architectural or business requirements that, that's needed. Um, it removes the, the cost and risk associated with, with downtime across the network and, and allows that faster, faster deployment. Um, the other piece that, that comes together with converge management is, is all around resiliency as well. So with everything being managed in, in, one, uh, in one dashboard, it, it allows you to minimize the risk um, in terms of downtime across the network. Um, we know that downtime across the network for many organizations equates dollars lost, um, 
pounds lost, euros lost. So by having this common dashboard, it means that customers are able to get up and running faster, troubleshoot faster and identify, resolve uh, and diagnose problems across the network much, much faster than, um, than other environments, meaning that they minimize the risk to their business in terms of, uh, in terms of downtime and they're able to offer greater convenience to their, to their customers. Um, the second criteria was around scalability. So this benefit here is really around um, the ability to pay as you grow. So it means that customers can expand their network as their business grows and as their requirements change. So the unique feature within the Ruckus ICX line means that the network can be expanded without that costly forklift upgrade. These common base units that, that we have within the ICX portfolio, there's, so in the 7150 line as an example, there's maybe three or four base products, which are you know, 24 port, 48 port, with or without PoE. Um, and these, these base units can then um, be purchased by the customer, they can make the investment in them. And as they need uh, a new feature or, or an incremental connectivity upgrade, like you know, uh, one gig to two times 10 gig, whatever that, that um, upgrade is needed, it's based on a software enabled upgrade. So it's less disruptive, this license based port upgrade and, um, and uh, greater capacity that's able to be delivered with the ICX line um, is, um, is unmatched in terms of its scalability. The, the experience is much simpler for the customer, the investment is much, um, much more palatable, and the disruption is minimized as well as there's no need to rip out the base unit and replace it with another. That same base unit that they've invested in will, will stay with them um, and, um, and be upgraded. The second piece around scalability is around flexibility of deployment options. So it means um, that the customer can benefit from this flexible stacking within the network. So we have the ability to stack over long distances for those um, ethernet optics for distances up to 10 kilometers um, across wiring closets in the building or even between buildings. There's an additional whole host of, um, of uh, features within the ICX line, like the campus fabric, the cloud managed solutions, which are all available by these simple configuration changes, meaning that the customer is able to take advantage of these scalable and flexible deployments so they can protect the investment they're making today. They can make a simple license-based upgrade to meet the capacity and performance that they may need in the future without a costly uh, chassis-based system um, resulting in a disruptive and expensive forklift upgrade. And then the last piece around superior performance. So this scalable performance is, um, is delivered even at the edge of the network um, and paired with that high power PoE. Um, uh, with the ability to support even the most demanding um, applications, access points, um, or, or devices, all delivered at a, at a much lower TCO. Um, so when it comes to a power capacity perspective, we're seeing a lot of um, enterprise end customers are looking to deploy um, many, many more IoT um, devices. Um, they're looking to deploy video surveillance equipment at the, at the edge. And also they're making the investment in these advanced wireless APs. It could be for Wi-Fi 6 or even even some of the units for, for, for Wave 2, Wi-Fi 5. So these, these uh, advanced APs, this video surveillance equipment, these advanced devices all have extremely rich uh, power, um, power demands. So we provide the latest power um, over Ethernet technology, which delivers up to 90 watts per port, meaning that customers can power extremely high performance IoT uh, networks without the need um, to run extra cabling, without the need to um, complicate the deployment by um, introducing extra, um, extra uh, power requirements to it. So the fundamental infrastructure that's in place has the ability to power some of these high demand, high, high uh, power hungry devices at the edge of the network as well. So you're able to um, deliver that capacity both from a networking perspective and also from a, from a power perspective. And then the final piece is, is around um, eliminating overpaying. So the performance that's needed from an enterprise grade perspective is, is delivered at a very palatable cost with the, with the Ruckus portfolio. So this is something that's, um, that's well known when it comes to our wireless, uh, uh, wireless portfolio, but is, is perhaps less well understood when it comes to the switching piece. So customers are able to eliminate overpaying for that performance. So they don't need to pay over the odds to achieve the same level of performance and they're able to optimize their wireless network through the investment in multi-gigabit switching. So we have multi-gig access and even the entry level switches. Um, and as we've covered in the, in the um, power for performance piece, the, um, 
the switches can easily be upgraded based on a, a license-based um, upgrade. So, so the customer is able to extract even greater value from every switch they've made um, and get more from, from the investment they make um, in, our, in our networking infrastructure. So to bring it all together then, so if, you're, if your Ruckus Wireless customer doesn't connect their Ruckus Wireless AP to a Ruckus switch, there's three advantages they can't, they can't leverage. They are unable to deploy and manage an enterprise grade network to 20 to 40% lower cost. They're unable to react quickly to these unexpected events across the network by effectively troubleshooting and managing the network as they don't have that end-to-end -end visibility. And finally, they're unable to power those high performance networks to support those data rich applications, um, which they need, frankly, to offer a competitive edge in their, in their marketplace today. So it's bringing it all together in terms of the unique benefits that customers can take advantage of um, when investing in a Ruckus AP paired with a Ruckus switch. So the next stage of the sales cycle is around objection handling. So when we go back to the, to the perspective of the customer, so they've identified they have a requirement, they're like, right, okay, I need to make an investment in my switching infrastructure. Oh, sugar. I need to make an investment in my switching infrastructure. Um, I know what outcomes I'm looking to achieve because you've set a buyer's criteria with me. So I'm gonna assess every solution based around this buyer's criteria. You've delivered me a really compelling value proposition. I, I hear what you're saying. It's very exciting, the, the benefits I can take advantage of by making this investment. But why should I act now? So I'm going to stress test the solution that you've put forward to me to ensure that um, I feel confident in, in what you're positioning to me. So here's where the customer is looking for greater support. They're looking for, for reassurance um, before they make their investment. And there's a number of routes that we can, we can um, achieve this with the customer. Um, before we get to the to the final stage of the of the buying cycle, so some of the common objections that we hear from um, uh, from customers and from opportunities in the field center on these, and, and I don't know if these are also um, common to some of the ones that you hear, or even objections that you may have before you know before starting to sell rocker switching as opposed to whichever vendor you work with today. So. Some of the common objections we hear is that Ruckus hasn't really got a switching pedigree. We know Ruckus is a great wireless vendor, very strong in hospitality, good with service providers. They're not really a, a big player when it comes to the switching market. The second common objection is like, look, I, I hear what you're saying, but frankly, a switch is just a switch. I need something to plug my AP into and, and I don't want to overly invest in, in a part of the network that's, that's not critical. Um, the third common objection is that Ruckus doesn't have a solution for the core. And the last most common objection is that we already know Cisco, we already know Meraki, we already know Aruba, Juniper. We don't want to retrain our teams on, on the Ruckus solution. We've already made this investment in our resource um, and our technical expertise with another vendor. And it's very disruptive um, for us to retrain all of our teams. We're not, we're not sure in, in terms of the investment if it's worth it. So we've brought together some canned content here. So we've got, we've got some answers ready so that when these objections come up, we have the ability to, to, to meet those. So the, the first common objection around Ruckus not having a switching pedigree. So um, you hear from the customer, okay, I know Ruckus is a wireless company. It's great, great AP technology, amazing um, RF technology in, in every access point. I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of the brand. However, they don't have a strong history in terms of offering switches. So I'm gonna stay with Cisco, I'm gonna stay with HP because they've got a lot of functionality which is based on years and years of experience with this technology and, and Ruckus is just too new to it to, to really compete. So our response to, to, the, to this objection is that we have a very rich history when it comes to, to switching. So the ICX portfolio has its roots in foundry networks. And, and those of you that are more familiar with them um, with the switching industry will, will know that Foundry was a real pioneer in terms of wired networks. So we own all of that intellectual property that's associated with those innovations that were driven by Foundry and by Brocade. Um, and we've continued to make that investment in, in R&D um, when it comes to the ICX line. So um, the fruits of that have been that we have been recognized by CRN and they've recognized our 7850 switches as their networking product of the year, which has is, which is helped to further boost that reputation. Um, and we have over 14,000 ICX customers um, across, uh, across the world in, in a whole number of verticals, not just isolated to hospitality, not just isolated to, to service providers, but across a, a number of different verticals. Um, 
we've uh, invested um, in R and D, which has delivered um, which has delivered new features, um, things like integrated management with both smart zone. We also have integrated management with our ICX line and our APs across the Unleashed line, and also our cloud managed platform. And we have further switch launches uh, planned for the for the coming months. Um, the last 18 months has seen two new hardware platforms and several major software updates with more and more plans. So we have this history from, from Foundry um, in place. We have that intellectual property. The investment that Brocade made on top of that within the ICX line has been further built upon with Comscope and with Ruckus um, as we continue to, to make this investment. And just some examples on a, on a timeline you can see here. We've put the wireless um, achievements um, on, on the bottom to kind of show how we're matching our, our dedication to excellence both in our wireless technology and in our wired technology. So you can see the history here of having the first one gig switch with Foundry all the way through to offering the first 100 gig wiring closet switch with Brockers. That investment in, with R&D has continued to deliver um, innovation. The next common objection is around a switch is just a switch. So I know that not all wireless access points um, are created equal. Some, some access points have greater performance than others, but, but let's be realistic. Fundamentally, a switch is just a switch. I just need PoE. I just need something to power my access points, power my network. Um, I really don't need to make a, a heavy investment in this element of, our, of my uh, networking portfolio. It's, it's just not mission critical. The response here is that these cheap consumer grade switches, which are a switch is just a switch um, type switches, may be good enough in some environments. So those less high density, those less high performance environments, it, it may be good enough. It may just about suffice um, in those environments. But if you're looking to deliver that enterprise grade uh, wireless, you need a strong foundation so that that wireless is able to perform at its full potential. So. We're seeing this today in terms of Wi-Fi technology evolving as we're seeing the advent of Wi-Fi 6. The sophistication in terms of the functionality within these APs is increasing with each launch of another wireless standard. And that need for the enterprise grade switching foundation becomes ever more critical to realize the investment that you've made in, in your access points. Um, in addition, when we're looking from a requirement perspective, um, when we match the customer requirements to the Rucker solution, um, to deliver the best price for performance, we come out on top here. So it's it's less about disseminating all of the elements within within the uh, within the order for the customer. It's really about going back to set that requirement with the customer about what they need and ensuring that the solution, the whole solution that's put together, is one that's competitive and and optimized to deliver the customer with the, with the optimum uh, performance for the price they're willing to make. And then the final piece that, uh, around a, a switch being just a switch is that if you're if a customer is using a non ruckus switch to support their ruckus wireless network because you know they believe that the Wi-Fi technology in the AP to be superior, if they're not going to take advantage of the investment in the ruckus switch to pair with that access point, there's no way to take advantage of any current or future integrations with Smart Zone, Unleashed, or or even Cloud. So they're limiting their management capabilities, they're limiting their visibility into the network, and they're limiting their ability to troubleshoot um, additionally. And then the third criteria is around Ruckus not having a solution for the core. So this, this comes up often in, in um, opportunities against um, Cisco or against HP. So the Ruckus switch portfolio only really includes PoE switches to, to support the APs. There's not really the aggregation or core switching that's needed to deliver that high performance core functionality. Um, so the response here is that we have specifically designed our ICX line to deliver that high density core switching functionality with that sophisticated layer three functionality across all interface speeds, all the way from the one gigabit, all the way up to the hundred gigabits. Um, and in addition, the innovative architecture that comes with the ICX line means that um, you can set your network, network up to, to cluster together to create extremely powerful core switching systems, which um, from a performance perspective match or even outperform um, those chassis based systems um, in terms of performance and also the price the, that scalable pay-as-you-grow price that, that's needed to, to invest in to maintain and deliver that performance um, that the customer requires and then the final most common objection I think this is this is a, you know after you've delivered a really compelling pitch the customer's like yeah great this, this sounds incredible but 
all of my engineers are Cisco engineers. They're, they're all trained and very experienced with the Cisco HP system and, and those switches. This is a real big cost for me to invest in retraining all of them, learning a new command language. I'm just not sure that the outcome I'm going to get is going to be worth this, this investment that I, that I need to make in terms of my IT team. So the response here is that it's extremely simple with our ICX line. The configuration command language of the ICX switches is actually extremely similar to that of Cisco and HP. Um, we've commonly had um, situations where customers have um, set up a proof of concept just so they can, we've set up a proof of concept with the customers so they can experience that command language for themselves. And the response has been that it's actually extremely, extremely similar. It's not so disruptive to, to migrate to, to another command language. It's not actually night and day. Um, and also there's, there's the additional benefits that you lose as well. So the, the language, the configuration, the training of the IT teams is, is one element, which is actually um, less prohibitive than, than perhaps the perception is out there. But not only um, um, is there or the consideration around the training of those engineers, but also the additional benefits of that smart zone platform of that unified management for wired and wireless that, that you're able to take advantage of. So yes, there may be a new command language, but you get the benefit of simplified deployment. You get that faster configuration and the greater visibility that you need for troubleshooting. So it's not just a case of, um, of, uh, of the language alone. And in addition, unlike um, unlike other um, vendors, if that training is required, then we offer both online self-paced courses um, so that you can minimize any time away from the office, as well as, of course, the, the in-person trainings that, that we can deliver to ensure that that customer feels confident um, in how to manage their network. So they can, they can um, make that migration and, and, and learn, that, um, learn that new configuration language at a pace that suits them and suits their business and minimizes their, their time away from the office and minimizes the, the risk to the business there. So the final stage of the buying cycle is really around, the, so the customer, let's go right back to the beginning. So we've identified the requirement. We have set a buying criteria with the customer centered around outcomes and, um, and drivers behind this investment. We have smashed it in terms of the value proposition. We've delivered one that's perfectly aligned to that buyer's criteria that's blown the customer's socks off. Um, we've handled any remaining objections that the customer has around um, um, retraining their engineers around a switch being just a switch around making that investment in their in their switching infrastructure and at this final stage the customer's thinking okay what's going to happen if i say yes um, is this ruckus uh, technology actually going to work everything that they've promised is it, is it actually going to, to to work as they've um, as they as they've articulated it am i going to get burnt am i going to really regret this change that i've made away from our existing vendor over to this new vendor and ultimately am i going to get fired for this Massive, massive mistake. So here, we just need to create the sense of urgency with, it, with a clear call to action with the customer by assuring them of any remaining concerns and, and, and just uh, doing whatever we need to to, um, to allay any concerns in the customer's mind and make them feel confident in their investment in, in this technology. Um, so going back to that point around technology, it's, it's not just the technology they're making the investment in. They're making the investment in the company. They're making the investment in the people that they've encountered. So the last few things that we can do to, to assure the customer are, um, and actually this is one of the most compelling um, um, things that we can do. There was a study done by, uh, I think it was Forbes magazine, which was around what is the most compelling piece of content that, um, that um, sellers can put forward. And it's all around testimonials. So the customers heard from us in terms of what we can deliver, what solution we can put in place for them, how we can meet their needs. Um, it's quite another thing for them to hear that experience from another person who's made that investment, who sounds like them, who's gone through that whole experience and had a positive outcome at the end of it. Um, hearing that experience from another peer, from another person um, in the enterprise space is, is extremely compelling. So they can hear firsthand how the solution that was promised was actually delivered to that end customer. So I would urge um, all of you on the call to take advantage of the tactic that Carla mentioned at the beginning of the call to build up that reference library and those case studies so that you have that bank of satisfied customers who've had a positive experience with you to take as references forward when you're speaking to a new customer. So someone who can speak on behalf um, you know, of, of their experience of how, um, of how the solution met their needs 
and that sounds like the customer that you're engaged with at the moment. Uh, there's plenty of case studies and references as well on the Comscope website um, and Pedicom have again invested in, in a huge resource library that's available um, when in discussions with, uh, with customers. The second piece is to bring in Rucker sales. So we want to be by your side when you're, when you're in a discussion with a customer. Um, we want to show, you know, there's, there's going to be those certain customers that you want to show the investment and the attention that is needed for, for, the, for the scale of that, of that customer, for the complexity that they're looking to, to address. So bring in Rucker sales, show that you have a, a, an army behind you in terms of being able to deliver this and bring in the Rucker sales representative to help talk through some of the um, references that we have, some of the other um, deployments that we've, um, that we've run through from a worldwide perspective or, or local to your region um, and bring in the engineers as well. Bring in an engineer to help have that discussion, um, to talk about the innovative architecture, to talk about how that license-based upgrade works in terms of providing that page to grow functionality. So um, where needed, um, absolutely draw in the Rucker sales team to, to help support you um, and show that you, know, you have a full force behind you. The vendor is by your side um, when it comes to delivering the solution that you're promising. And then the third very compelling tactic that we have is a proof of concept. So typically, and I'm sure you know, many of you deploy this, deploy this on a regular basis, when it comes to lining up ruckus against the competition, we would typically win in a street fight. So if we set up a proof of concept and show that we're willing to put um, you know, our equipment where our mouth is, um, we're, we're able to show that from a performance and capacity perspective, we're able to deliver on the promises that we've, we've discussed up until now. Um, setting up a proof of concept is a, is a way to mitigate that risk so the customer can see for themselves that this is actually going to work. This is really going to, everything they promised me is really going to come true. And I can have some hands-on experience of, of seeing how this really works in, in real life and in, in a true example that's representative of, of my business. So take advantage of that. Use the, use the ability to set up a, a proof of concept and prove and show that capability to your customer. I'm going to close off there. I'm going to thank you all for listening to, to me bleat on for nearly a whole hour. And thank you for your patience. Um, Carla's going to take us through the, the next steps, but I hope the content here has been compelling. And I hope this helps drive forward some of the conversations that you have with your customers in field in terms of helping you identify the switching opportunities to allow you to increase your deal sizes and, and gain that competitive edge in the market. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Asina. That was a really fantastic presentation um, and lots of takeaways there. So um, yeah, brilliant. Love what you were saying around the objection handling. Um, one of the other things I thought of as well um, when we were discussing training, um, although we're not doing training in-house at the moment, Perdicom are still um, able to run virtual training. Um, so if you're interested in um, ICX, uh, especially um, we can provide you a way to register your interest in the follow-up to this and if we've got enough numbers together we can we can still run those courses which is excellent um, so yeah thank you so much I think that was really fantastic um, we can stay on the line now for another sort of five or ten minutes um, just to yeah. see whether there's any um, questions around any of the content um, and also just Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Just to reiterate as well, we will be following up. So um, I'll provide all the links you need. Uh, we've got a recording of um, the presentation. I think we're able to share the slide deck as well, Hasina. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've also got quite a few promotions running as well, which um, are also relevant. I'll link to those in the follow up email. But just to remind you, we've got the, um, the ICX Velocity promotion running, um, which provides you 66% off um, list price, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, there really is a lot um, out there uh, for us to be able to support you um, in everything you're doing. So thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Let's see, in the chat window, I can see there was one that came up. Please provide the link for online courses. Yeah, that's no sure. problem. Yeah, I will do that. No problem. Um, and then let me just open up the Q&A, see if there's anything in there. No open questions. Wow. And I'm, I'm sure that's not because 
<laughs> we've answered everyone in the presentation. Um, you just covered everything so well. <laughs> quite possibly, quite possibly. Um, I mean, the, the, other, the other common things that we, um, that we hear and that we're working on are, are really around um, um, cost. So obviously in the presentation that we, um, that we ran through today, we touched on cost both from an OPEX perspective, from a, from a management um, uh, view, and also the, the CapEx cost as well. Um, that's, um, that's based on the acquisition of the assets themselves. One thing that we're learning with our engagements with customers is that, that cost and, and associated costs are is a lot more complex and becoming a, a much richer picture. Um, so the, <clears throat> the, challenge around, um, the challenge around meeting that cost demand also floods into things like speed of deployment. Um, we have one customer who um, had a competitor's um, uh, networking infrastructure in place and whenever they needed to expand they had to draw in they had to bring in experts from the vendor um, in order to help them configure because their network was extremely complex and, and they had some some um, some really uh, granular pieces they needed to to achieve with their infrastructure so when we're talking about cost with customers I would also emphasize that this cost is not just the acquisition cost but it also equates into the cost savings you're able to make by the speed of deployment you're able to achieve because of this innovative architecture. Um, there's also the additional cost in terms of minimizing that unplanned, unplanned downtime. There was a story one of our salespeople told us about a hospitality customer that had multiple sites um, across, um, across the world and downtime across the network. He's actually able to equate the dollar cost of every minute of downtime across his network. So when it comes to cost savings, there's, there's so many um, proliferations of this. It's not just simply a static CapEx and OPEX cost. There's a number of other elements to, to draw into that. And I'm sure many of you will have references from, from different customers you've worked with to, to further articulate that point. Um, I can see one question just popped in in terms of the cost savings of 20 to 40%, primarily the CapEx on the ICX, which is compared to the market price, i.e. Cisco. Yeah, so, I mean, we have, this is, um, this is actually a very, um, uh, uh, timely question because we're investing in um, some research into TCO because um, it seems that every vendor has a TCO calculator and lo and behold that vendor comes out on top when you um, when you plug in your um, plug in the details of your deployment. The 20 to 40 percent was based on calculations done from our PLM team on, a, on an average of, of deployments that we that we typically serve. Um, and yes, it was it was largely based on on the on the Cisco hardware in terms of coming up with that with that twenty percent lower acquisition cost. I think from an access point perspective, we <coughs> typically see around thirty percent lower costs um, due to the enhanced performance. And so the the same similar kind of model was applied in terms of the superior performance we're able to deliver with lower based lower cost uh, base units. Um, and the 42% uh, lower operational costs was based on a, on a combination of um, the um, uh, a consolidation of management costs because you have your wired and your wireless in one place, the consolidation of vendors, licenses, et cetera, um, and also the benefits of having one system that talks to another. So you don't have to have two separate languages learned in order to, to troubleshoot. Um, so yes, the cost saving of 20 to 40% is based on um, the, the marketplace, i.e. Cisco, and we're investing in additional research to, to come up with great uh, proof points behind TCO. Um, there was a comment by Gartner recently that talked about how TCO should not just be calculated on um, acquisition and management alone. There's so many more richer elements um, that are coming into play when it comes to calculating TCO. So we're, we're looking to um, provide you with some real world uh, TCO proof points to further fuel those conversations with customers. I'll just jump in there as well, because we, we've actually just put together um, an entire blog post on this. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. It's, yeah, as you say, not just hardware cost. So yeah, we, we've got quite an in-depth piece um, and I'll link that as well in the follow-up. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have lots and lots of links, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is the supply chain like? Are you dependent on China manufacturing? No, we're not. Um, that was, um, that was um, one thing that um, enabled us to not only take advantage of, um, of diversifying our um, supply chain um, as circumstances hit this year, but also last year um, with tariffs changing um, between um, uh, the US and, and China. So we have um, more than, uh, we have manufacturing sites in more than just China. We also have one in Taiwan. There's some other uh, global sites across the business for 
um, from a manufacturing perspective. Um, so supply chain is, um, is ramping up. I mean, this, this was an industry-wide problem um, earlier on in the year. This wasn't just isolated to, to Comscope or Ruckus. Um, however, because we have a diversified um, manufacturing base, um, we have tried our hardest to address um, challenges when it comes to supply chain. And, um, and we continue to work on this. The good news is that many of our manufacturing plants are returning to um, 80, 90, 100% um, uh, output. Um, so any challenges that we've had should hopefully be mitigated as, as, we, as we move forward. Uh, next question is, hi, does SmartZone have vertical dashboards for education, healthcare, retail, or is it one pane of glass for all? So SmartZone gives you one pane of glass to manage the network. We don't have separate um, viewpoints in terms of um, one version of SmartZone for education, one version for healthcare, or one version for retail. So the option as a, as a channel partner that you have here is either to configure um, that on behalf of your customer to give them what they need. As, as for, across um, industries, it's, it's often common challenges that they have when it comes to, to management. Um, so when using SmartZone, if you're, if you're kind of setting up multi-tenanted environments, you have the ability to create an environment that's bespoke for, the, for that customer, be they within education, healthcare, or retail. Um, the one pane of glass is really around all networking components. So it gives you within the IT team full visibility of your entire edge network. Um, and you're able to do things like that auto provisioning capability that we have the access points is also extended to the switching network as well. So from a functionality perspective, you have um, one, one management pane of glass to, to see your entire network. Um, one thing I'd also mention is that, um, especially as we talk education um, and retail, um, the other platform that also offers this converge management is our cloud platform. So the Ruckus cloud platform now has integration of the ICX line um, in there as well. So you're also able to configure um, APs and your switches with um, Ruckus Cloud, which offers um, an app um, uh, to, for, you know, for easier remote management of the network. And we're seeing a really big uptake within education and retail um, of, the, of the cloud platform as well. So that single pane of glass that you're able to deliver SmartZone, you're also able to deliver with uh, Ruckus Cloud. And the simplified dashboard um, that you get within cloud is very palatable to a lot of our education and retail customers because they're not looking necessarily for the granularity that you get within SmartZone to see every single component. Um, the, the cloud platform has a much more intuitive wizard guided workflow to kind of address common actions across, um, across the network. So you're still able to get that um, extended visibility, but with a more simplified dashboard for, for um, environments that we see commonly in education or, or retail. Um, what about US dollar prices will vary with exchange rate like APs? Um, uh, I, I don't know the, the full details behind this. I'm, I'm going to be um, honest about that. The pricing is, is um, very much dictated by um, I think yeah, we can come back to you on that because um, I think um, we can get sales to, to, to drop you a line, Duncan, um, and, and go through that. That's a good plan. That sounds like quite a specific <laughs> discussion. Yeah. So yeah. Um, of course, there's flexibility when it comes to pricing as well. As Carla mentioned, we have a promotion that's live. The 7150 line of access points has a, has a promotion that's running to allow you to get some transactional pricing, minimize, um, you know, minimize conversations going back and forth around, um, around getting to a palatable end cost with them um, for your, for your end customers. So, so there are other tactics again available um, to achieve a, a good end user price. Uh, is the license for smart zone per device, i.e. it doesn't matter if it's a switch or an AP or separate pricing per SKU? Mm, good question. I believe that there's separate licenses for APs and switches, but I'm not 100% on the pricing um, as, it, as it rolls out per SKU. So again, I'm going to let Carla and Sales yeah. team come up with a, with a separate call with you on that. I think, yeah, that's fine. We'll follow up um, separately, Lee. Thank you. Yeah, but you're right, Lee. There are you do need a separate license for the for the AP and for the switch. It's it's um it's not one license for for both. Um, Cisco are often on top, as most engineers are familiar with setup. Is your ICF compatible, or do, do they need to retrain? So so this is this is um this is really common. So I think that the the experience that we've had is when especially when we've offered um a proof of concept, um. 
Learning the command language for Ruckus has been extremely similar to the language that's used within Cisco or within HP um, platforms. So it hasn't been such a um, upheaval for many of those engineers, especially if they're proficient with the Cisco uh, command language, they're likely to be easily proficient within the Ruckus command language because they're built on such similar fundamentals. Um, I, I think the, the main thing here is experience, right? So um, there's uh, plenty of online training that, that kind of offers a, a route in to see some of these um, differences between the Ruckus platform um, and, the, and the Cisco platform and the, and the, the thing that's going to change people's minds is actually experiencing it for themselves. So having the ability to um, um, run a proof of concept, set up a demonstration or have an engineer show it to them. So if you're in an, an environment where an engineer is reticent and, and unsure in terms of that ICX language, bring in an engineer, bring in one of our SEs, bring in one of uh, Paddycom's team um, and bring in an engineer to, to talk engineer to engineer about the similarities within the language. I'd love to pretend that I could uh, talk um, as an engineer on this, but I, I'm going to have to defer to, um, to, the, to the specialists within this, but, br but bring in um, that resource so that they're able to have that conversation peer to peer um, rather than, you know, kind of um, rather than simply promise it, give them everything they need to, to experience it for themselves. Um, do you offer a four hour AHR on core switches or, and do you offer an engineer to site within four hours? Is it just AHR? Um, I'm not 100% on that in terms of the, the turnaround time of, of an engineer on site, especially in terms of how that links to different support contracts. So again, I'm going to defer to Carla on that and, and have someone follow up with a, with a separate oh. call on that so that you can go through a case by case uh, basis. <clears throat> Um, and then the last question is, when you talk about cloud, do you mean smart zone in the cloud or is cloud an alternative management platform to smart zone? Very good question, Lee. I'm glad you said that. So um, I said at the beginning of the call that I work for sales acceleration and, and my personal mission for the rest of the year is to embed cloud across our business. So I'm delighted you've asked that. Mm -hmm. um, so when I talk about cloud, I actually mean a separate platform. So from a management perspective, um, across the network, we have smart zone, which is um, you can either have on premise or, or the virtual smart zone, which is your private cloud, exactly as you say, smart zone in the cloud type solution. We have cloud, which is a public cloud uh, platform uh, comparable to, to Meraki, um, which we have uh, um, boosted in terms of its um, functionality, its performance, um, its ease of use more recently. Um, and we also have Unleashed. So we have those three main um, management platforms that, that um, customers or partners can, can take advantage of. Cloud is an alter alternative management uh, platform to SmartZone. So I would say, in a nutshell, I would say that SmartZone is ideal for very complicated bespoke um, uh, networking infrastructure, network deployments. And the customer or the partner needs that granularity to be able to see every single inch of the network in, 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 in an extreme amount of detail. The cloud platform is ideal for customers who are looking for that same enterprise performance, enterprise grade performance, it's the same APs, the same switches, the same um, pieces that connect to that management platform. There's no compromise in terms of the, the um, performance of the network, but they need a much more simple and intuitive dashboard to be able to get up and running. So the cloud platform has these sort of wizard guided workflows that take you through common tasks like how to uh, configure, how to provision your APs, how to set up a guest SSID in a guest SSID in six clicks, including all social media logins. Um, so there's there's plenty of um, easy routes to get your network up and running. And to and they also have the RAG status flags within the cloud platform to allow you to zone in on on um, any problems within the network. So. Cloud is an alternative management platform to SmartZone. It's really designed for the customer who's looking for simplicity um, uh, rather than um, SmartZone, which is perhaps better for more complex deployments. That's not a blanket rule. That's not to say that a customer who's looking for simplicity may not feel the SmartZone is simpler for them. Um, but largely, that's, that's how we would categorize those, those different pieces. And um, there's going to be more coming up on cloud. So there'll be, um, if that's something you're interested in, we can definitely follow up and, and give you more insight into the cloud platform and, and take you through the dashboard itself. The cloud platform does support multi-tenancy. I suppose it depends on how you want to set it up. So this is the last question from Vassal. Um, it depends on how you want to set it up. So within the cloud platform, you can set up multiple venues. 
Um, so it allows you to set up multi multi site environments within your network and you can and you can manage and see all of it from a single dashboard from a single interface. Um, and it allows you to copy paste, you know, configurations from one venue to another. So it allows you to simplify your setup. Um, one recent uh, capability we've added to the cloud platform is that there's now the off option to be a cloud MSP. So you can buy a cloud MSP license, which allows you to buy bundles of licenses and then you sell, sell those on or reuse those even between customer to customer. So the multi-tenancy is available both from the customer perspective to set up multiple venues and multiple sites across the cloud platform or for you as a partner to manage multiple customers um, as almost like a, a mini MSP um, using the cloud platform. So yes, does support multi-tenancy, but not to the same granularity that you get within SmartZone. I think, I think I'm gonna halt there. I think that was, uh, <laughs> that was the last question. I don't wanna overtake this too much by talking about cloud, even though I'd be delighted to. But, um, but I hope that we've, we've addressed most of those questions there. And, and as Carla mentioned, if there's anything more specific, we can certainly arrange a one-on-one -on -one call to go through some of those more specific um, customer or deployment questions that you might have. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we've got a copy of all your questions here as well. So we will answer what we can in the follow-up. Um, and then if there's anything that we need to come back to you on um, individually, um, I can arrange for that to happen as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Um, have we got any more questions or I think we might be, I think we might be done. <laughs> I think we're good. I think there's just one. No, no, there's just a comment in the chat window. No, no, no other questions in there. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, look forward to following up and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you all soon. Thank you.